this one now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And then we seek the help and the blessings of the name of God, the most loving, the eternally merciful. Wafdulu salati wa tammu taslim ala Sayyidina wa Mawlana wa Habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi al-tahirin wa ashabihi al-tayyibin wa man tabi'uhum bi ihsanin ila yawmiddin We ask that God exalt our beloved, our master, our leader Muhammad and his immaculate family and his pure companions and those who follow them with excellence till the day of judgment uh, since we're going to be talking mostly about al muraqaba today, which is awareness, I invite you and myself to take a moment to rest your gaze uh, towards the floor or to close your eyes. Put your hands wherever they fall comfortably. Straighten your, your torso, as, straighten your back as best you can and just, just gently, gently lower your, your chin, just a little, just a little. So I invite you to just let's begin with awareness, with muraqaba that essentially we are spirits. We are ruh, that we are light. That is who we are in our origin before we were born from our mothers into this world. We were lights, it's pure consciousness, suspended in space. And that spirit, that light that is at the very core of your being is entirely beautiful is perfect, is absolute, is with Allah right now, back then and, and right now. That spirit is not from this world. You as spirit, our visitor. And you're here to bring goodness into the world. Everything good about you comes from that spirit. Everything pure, everything wholesome comes from that identity, your spiritual identity. And then I want you to uh, turn your awareness to the breath. Just take a deep breath in. Just feel your lungs. The breath that is like wind. Expanding lungs that are like trees. And breathe out. And in. And out. And in. And out. I want you to bring into your awareness that this breath is a gift. 
It's the most subtle of gifts that Allah has bestowed upon us. Just take a moment to be aware of your breaths as you inhale and exhale. You bring in oxygen that goes into your lungs, that nourishes your heart with oxygen that shines like a star, that radiates, that sends blood, life-giving oxygen like a star shining light throughout your body. What a miracle. That heart that's, that's beating in your chest most of the time without your awareness, I want you to bring your awareness to your heart. Your heart is the object of God's gaze. Your, your heart is the object of God's gaze. The beloved of Allah Allah bless him and grant him peace said that God does not look at your bodies or your wealth rather he gazes at your hearts and your deeds So now, I want us to, as we, as we end this awareness practice, I want us to just bring our attention to the sounds that we hear. What can you hear? What's the message? Everything in the heavens and the earth is an ayah. Everything in the heavens and the earth is evidence, is proof. Bring your attention to the chair or the, the cushion or the floor that you're sitting on that's supporting you that's connected to the green blue earth we thank Allah for grandmother earth for her support her strength. <clears throat> Bring your attention to what's above you, the ceiling, that beautifies this room, the roof, that protects us from the elements, the sky full of beautiful stars, full of beautiful stars, comets, meteorites, and planets, 
all put there to remind us as an adornment as a protection all of this for you and we thank Allah for the sky for grandfather sky for teaching us what it's like to show awe and finally without opening your eyes or without lifting your gaze if your eyes are open but lowered just bring your attention to the people around you to the bodies around you to the spirits around you Allah chose each person in here to share this moment with you each person is in here for a wisdom a divine wisdom anyone could be here Allah chose these people and that awareness I invite you to bring gratitude, thankfulness to heart for the people that are sharing this time and this space with you. That is a sacred relationship. That is a connection that was predetermined before you or I were ever a thing unremembered, before the creation of the heavens and the earth as we know them. Let us bring gratitude for the people that are around us to our to our right people that are in front of us people that are to our left people that are behind us I invite you to thank Allah for them for their presence none of them is insignificant they're all here for you and you are here for them Every body, every mind, every soul, every spirit is on a journey towards completion and perfection. And right now we share the road. So with that, uh, dear brothers and sisters, when you're ready, when you're ready, uh, gently open your eyes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he invites us to be in a state of awareness in the Qur'an. There are uh, ayats that are mentioned in the last 10 ayat of the chapter of the family of Imran. Peace and blessings be upon him. The third chapter of the Qur'an that begin a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth wa ikhtilaf al-layli wal nahar and the changing of night and day la ayat li ulil albab 
there are proofs, there are messages, there are signs for those who possess innermost hearts. Those who awaken to their deepest reality. The heart is, a, is an organ of cognition and love, knowledge and love. The Ul al albab are, are people that are knowers and lovers. These are the people that are able to read the signs that are in the heavens and the earth, that are in the changing, the alteration, the cycle of night and day, of life and death, of birth and renewal. Every moment for such people is a miracle. Or if you want to use more conventional language, every moment is a magical. For Ulul Albab. Then Allah says, Alladina Yathkuruna Allah Qiyaman wa Kuudan wa Allah Junubihim. He begins to describe some of their attributes. And all throughout the Quran, Allah mentions the attributes of these these special people, Ulul Albab. You can actually, you know, the next Ramadan, when you're reading the Quran, just highlight all the places where Allah describes Ulul Albab often translated as people of intelligence or people of wisdom or people of hearts. The Labib is someone who's intelligent, who's wise, who's, who's living life from their innermost core, not just from their sensory organs, right? not just from what they see and what they hear, what they taste, what they smell, what they touch, but their, their inner organs, right? because we have, the Quran teaches us that there are extrasensory organs that we've been gifted with. We have physical sensory organs that give us information about the physical world so that we are able to navigate that world. We're able to derive benefit and give benefit in that world. We're able to avoid harm from that world. That's what our sens sensory, our five senses afford us. Great blessing. Even though scientists tell us at any moment we're only experiencing four or five percent of the physical world around us. Four or five percent. That's all, like what you're seeing right now is actually only four or five percent. Hey, sweetie. Only four or five percent of what's actually in front of you. When we look at the, the cosmos, when we look at the galaxies and the stellar systems with the Hubble telescope or the James Webb telescope, we're only seeing four or five percent of the observable universe. That's it. That's it. Just enough so that we can survive. <laughs> and do some good while we're here. Just enough. Because if we were to see everything, most of us would go crazy. If you were to see every quark and every neutrino and every microbe and every virus and, I mean, I mean, have you seen some of these viruses and bacteria? Scary stuff, right? We'd, we, most of us couldn't handle it. Allah just lets us see enough so we can benefit and avoid harm. Allah lets us know enough so we can worship Him. We know that we shouldn't be worshiping ourselves. We shouldn't be worshiping money. We shouldn't be worshiping power or influence. We should not be worshiping stone and metal, ideas, philosophies, ideologies. We shouldn't be worshiping trends Allah gives us just enough knowledge not to overload our, our minds and our hearts. So Allah goes on to say about these people, they remember 
Allah standing, sitting, and when they lie down on their sides. Meaning that, and I, I was mentioning this the other night, just to use more conventional language, these people, ulul albab, the people who possess innermost hearts, because there, there's four words for heart in the Quran, the sadr, the qalb, the fuad, and the lub. The sadr is the outermost heart, Right, we learn in Surah Al-Nas. That's the part of us that Satan, that the devil, the Iblis, may Allah protect us from him, the diabolical one, right? Diablos. That's the only part of us that he can have access to. That's it, the Sadr. Allah doesn't say, Allah doesn't say, Allah doesn't say He can only get access to the courtyard of your, of your being if you're not in dhikr. But these people, Ulul Albab, they're always in dhikr. They're in dhikr of Allah, they're in remembrance of Allah, they're in awareness of the absolute reality. That's what Muslims seek. We're not virtual reality and augmented reality are interesting. Virtual VR and AR are interesting. But they're just shadows of shadows of shadows of absolute reality. Al-Haq. Allah is absolute reality. Physical reality is interesting. It's beautiful. It's majestic. But it's, it's nothing compared to God. It's like comparing any number to infinity. Any number compared to infinity is what? Equals what? Zero. Zero. And so these inner sensory organs, my dear brothers and sisters, the, are activated through dhikr and fikr, right? They're activated through remembering, recalling, bringing into our awareness the absolute reality in all of our states. Whether we are standing, sitting, lying down, we're in a state of remembrance, awareness, recalling, ultimate reality. And then Allah says this about them. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْكِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And they meditate upon the form, upon the structure, upon the creation of the heavens and the earth. That's what they reflect upon. So you have these two spiritual practices that human beings have been gifted. The spiritual practice of dhikr, and the spiritual practice of fikr. Right, why, you know, people, there's a lot of people who drink liquor, right? A lot of people who drink liquor. Why, why do people drink liquor? Why do people use drugs, narcotics, psychedelics, and you know, drink ayahuasca and sniff mushrooms and like, why do people do that there's something inside of us that knows that there's more we want more why do we s spend billions of dollars